hey everyone and welcome back now that we have splunk up and running uh, we can go forward for the hands on and we'll look into some of the amazing features uh, which splunk has to offer now if you'll basically see over here splunk really has a lot of options and throughout the video series uh, we'll be exploring uh, these options however uh, to begin with we'll go ahead and add a sample data uh, so that we can begin uh, searching and understand various search uh, specific aspects so in order to do that uh, you have to go to settings you need to click on add data you can skip this and you need to click on upload now uh, before you click on upload you basically need to have a sample data now I do have uh, two files over here so basically this is the sample data uh, where we will be exploring from right now so I'll be uploading both of these files uh, within Splunk so in order to do that, uh, let me click on upload. Uh, you can click on select file and you can upload uh, one of the data here. So I'll, I'll click on access. I'll select open. I'll go to next. Now uh, within the source type, uh, you can give it access underscore combine. So if you type access underscore combine, you will see that there is an option uh, which has come here. You can go ahead and click here and go to next host uh, you can just uh, leave everything as default and go ahead and click on submit similarly uh, what we'll do uh, we'll add one more data so I'll click on upload go to select file this time we'll select a file called as secure I'll go to next the source type this thing would be Linux underscore secure I'll go to next I'll go ahead and I'll submit it perfect so uh, now we have uh, both the uh, files uploaded so now if I just click on the Splunk Enterprise logo it will take me to the default page so now you can click on search and reporting. So search and reporting is where you can search all of your data and you can go ahead and uh, do all kind of a, uh, fancy stuff. So now if you will see there are total of 13,000 events uh, and if you click on data summary, you would see that there are two sources. Uh, one is access.log and second is secure.log. Now within the source type, you would see that there are two source type. One is access combined and second is Linux underscore secure. We'll be discussing about source types in the upcoming video. So now uh, before we go further, I would quickly like to show you what exactly uh, these file contain. So let me quickly open the access file uh, with my atom editor. And basically uh, this is a Apache or you can say a Nginx uh, web server access log uh, which contains various details related to the requests which are being made by the clients. So let me do one thing. I'll copy a sample request here and let me open up a new text document. I'll say it as test and I'll paste the sample request here. So basically whatever log file that you put in a log monitoring system uh, basically the reason why you use log monitoring system is to get some kind of a statistics whether web server is working or if there are any security breaches which are happening how many failed uh, authentication attempts that are happening and so on so from this log file if i have to have a meaningful information first thing what i need to do is i have to parse this uh, specific uh, log file so since we are just taking example of a single line let's parse this manually so i'll just divide these fields into multiple lines let me divide it into multiple lines so now there are uh, basically uh, you would say let me just remove the dash dash there are basically five uh, there's one more line so basically there are six major lines uh, that are created so the first one this is basically the client IP address so this is the client IP address now this is the timestamp so I would say this is a timestamp now this is a method so uh, uh, there can be various HTTP method you have get uh, you have post and various others 
so this is a http method all right now this 200 that you see over here in fact this is the http response code so uh, depending upon whether the request that you make uh, whether it was successful or not whether it failed or there was an access denied uh, the http response code changes now uh, the next part uh, this is basically uh, the amount of uh, i would say transfer i would say packets or i would say bytes next field is the referrer and uh, the last field is the user agent so now uh, this one line that we have over here after i parse it it becomes much more easier for me to understand so now i can see okay this specific request has come from a specific ip address now this ip address can uh, belong to russia it can belong to us so for example uh, if i want to see how many requests uh, to my websites are coming from russia if i want to see that then a log monitoring system should be able to parse the log file in such a way that each field uh, is meaningful this is very very important all right so now uh, let's go to splunk i'll go to data summary and i'll go to sources and let me click on access log so this is the access log that we were discussing about now if you'll see over here splunk has extracted a lot of information from the log file let me uh, select this let me click here and you would see uh, splunk has actually extracted a huge amount of information now one of the information uh, that if you'll see it has extracted is the client ip so if we match here it has extracted the client ip now uh, the next thing that it has extracted is the method so this is a get request it has also extracted request time so this is a timestamp this is a status this is the uri and this is the user agent so you will see splunk has done all of these things for us and since splunk has extracted this field it the searching and reporting becomes extremely simple so let me quickly give you one example so now let's say a business has come to you with a requirement uh, to give information uh, with contains list of ip addresses who are visiting your website so all i have to do is i do a stats count by now here i have to put the field that i want to look for so the field is client ip so if i quickly do a stats count count by client ip you would see splunk will ek only extract that field so what splunk will do is it will only extract the field uh, which contains the client ip uh, value so this is uh, this is also called as parsing so any log that you upload uh, to splunk uh, if you want to have a meaningful information it always needs to get parsed if it does not get parsed it will not really have a, a proper meaning so uh this is a uh, very important so uh next thing i quickly wanted to show you before we conclude this video uh, is the second uh, log file that we had uploaded so if i go to the data summary and i go to the source i go to secure.log and uh, this is the timestamp like uh, i i'll select all time here and you see there are total of 9800 events now if i try to open this up you would see that uh, the log file contains that there is a failed password for invalid user app server from uh, this specific ip on port 3551 ssh2 so uh, let me do one thing i'll copy this file and i'll put it in my notepad i'll say it as secure and let's try to manually parse this specific file so as we already know in order to parse it we have to uh, make a meaningful information from it so the first uh, field is basically the timestamp second is the host name uh, third is basically the service name uh, fourth is basically uh, the message and uh, this specific field uh, it basically contains uh, the ip address from which a failed authentication attempt was made so uh, if i say this is timestamp field uh this is uh, you can say host name field uh 
this is the process name uh, which is the sshd process now then is the message now the message basically contains uh, app server so this app server is basically the username uh, then it contains the ip address from which ip address this failed authentication attempt was made so uh, one example was that in one of the organizations that i was working with uh, so I had recently joined and I saw that one of the servers, it had more than 10,000 failed attempts from an IP address which belonged to Russia. So uh, uh, good memories, then we went ahead, investigated and it uh, came out that the firewall uh, was open for all. Anyways, we'll, we'll discuss about those interesting aspects. So next is the client IP. Alright. So, uh, if these fields are passed, then only you will have some meaningful information. Now, if I look into this Splunk, what are the fields that it is uh, parsing? It is parsing PID, which is 5276. It is parsing the process name, which is SSHD. All right. Uh, and so basically it is parsing SSHD process name and it is parsing 5276. It is not really parsing things like uh, IP addresses from which the failed authentication attempt was made. So one use case, let's assume that I want to see from which IP address the failed uh, authentication attempts were made. How will I find that? Now I'll only be able to find after uh, these logs are passed. So currently these logs are not passed and hence a lot of information I'll not be able to look forward for. And this is the reason why uh, one of the most important aspect in a log monitoring system is that the logs should be parsed. So, uh, so with this, we'll conclude the video and in the next video, we'll look into how exactly uh, we can uh, make sure that these uh, specific logs are passed. So I hope this video has been informative for you and I look forward to see you in the next video.